Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, we have a little bit of a different video for you. Today, we are going to do a tier list for the characters that are in the beta for both singles and for duos and possible combinations for duos that I think would have really good synergy. All right, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like I thought. So coming in at number nine, somebody's going to hate me for it, but somebody has to be number nine. I'm going to say Orwin. While I have admitted to not being a good Orwin, I do think that her damage is lacking a lot and her explosive trap takes way too long to set up and coordinate with the rest of her abilities to be useful, to be incredibly useful in single player play. I'm not saying that you can't set up your explosive trap and then bait your enemy into it, because I've fallen for it, other people have fallen for it, whenever it goes off it's really funny, but they literally have an item in the game that's her four. If they take out that item, or they make her trap just be able to be dropped with no downtime or no like animation for it like she's already made she just drops it from like a pouch maybe then you could actually use it in a fight until then you're stuck standing still and you're you're stuck thinking like four moves ahead and if your opponent sees it are they actually going to be able to run into this or not i mean that's just me i mean if if i happen to see it on the ground if we're not in somewhere like the the tulip farms i'm gonna probably see it that's the only reason I got hit by it last time is because it was in the middle of the field. But until they like fix her explosive trap or they take out the item, then I also think that her uh, her right mouse button, the natural marksman, I don't think that that fits too well with her, her uh, three. I feel like it doesn't synergize well. I feel like her three should just be a stronger version without having to enact the stem in her right mouse button. That's just me. Coming in at number eight is gonna be Haru. I had to do a lot about it. I thought I thought about this. Um, the reason why he's coming in at number eight is mainly because the synergy of her inherent skill shadow step. That ability takes way too long to go off, and if it's your inherent skill, shouldn't you be able to pass that skill relatively quickly? Look at Ahon Kiris. She casts hers almost immediately, and it gets her out of trouble, and she can jump back into the fight. But where Haru does excel is honestly her 1-4 combo, uh, and also her 3-2 combo. But... Both of those require significant setup from her, and like it's it'll be more difficult for her to get it off on his own because the one is actually kind of difficult to hit, especially on a moving target. Um, as soon as they fix like the animation or something on her shadow step, I feel like it shouldn't take two and a half seconds to go off. If it, that's what it seems like, it seems like it takes five, but it's probably like two and a half. But as soon as they like fix that where like she can just throw down like a smoke bomb or something and like actually go invisible and re uh reposition herself for a more advantageous position i don't see her getting much uh getting much higher coming in at number seven heroin now i do like heroin for the amount of cc that she brings but I don't like, um, I don't like that she seems like a setup support type person. And while I, I do see the potential with her dagger and her seed of ice, it's not enough. I also feel like her Thomas Silve tree isn't quite as strong as it needs to be at rank one. Yes, it's unique, but also it goes down super fast um 
she does have really good cc with her dagger and her ice like i said but her dagger you have to be within melee range to go off so it immediately hurts her there because the rest of her abilities are all ranged so i i'm not quite sure how to fix her going forward but in solo play i don't like her as much mainly because everything she tries to do ends up getting interrupted before it can go off like if i'm channeling my seed of ice and somebody happens to like hit me or bump into me or just run past me in a, in a breeze that ability is automatically interrupted the same goes for her two or her three Sometimes you can get her four off, but it's not very often. And then if you do get it off and you don't have it ranked up or whatever, it, it goes down in like two hits. So like I said, buffer four, give that tree a little bit more tankiness. And maybe like to fix it, you enact a healing radius. And that if the closer you are to it, the more you heal, but the further away you fight from it or you get away from it, the less you heal, but you still heal for a certain amount while being under it the entire time. That's how I see you fixing her moving forward. Number six. Jordan. Or Jordan. Like I said, tell me how to say it down below. I'll fix it. Um, The reason why I'm not too keen on him is his abilities are difficult to hit and his one doesn't seem to fit with the rest of his kit the rest and also his uh inherent skill the shield of heidel so let me explain the fear of syrindia very cool ability i love it i do i really think it's cool and how it has such a long range and it can do so much damage but he carries a sword and shield the rest of his abilities all the rest of them involve either slinging the shield jumping up with the shield shield bashing i and then his his inherent skill his right uh, the shield of heidel he uses that with his shield nothing on his person would suggest that he has a spear anywhere now if you want to give him a, some range call it the sword and he throws his sword at them but as far as calling it a spear not really my cup of tea for the rest of his kit uh, where I feel like he does fall behind is his shield charge. I feel like if he hits you with this, he should make you fall down almost immediately, or you stay down or something. Some sort of additional uh, crowd control effect should be placed on this than what it is. Also, his shield of Heidel. I honestly feel like you should not be penalized for releasing this ability. If you put it up, it should remain up for the entire duration or at least have a cooldown that the buff stays active. So say that it stays active for five seconds and then the whole the total cooldown is like eight seconds. So you have three seconds of it being down. Kind of like Schultz with his getting CC immunity for three and a half seconds. Okay, that's cool. It really is. But with him... He has to hold it up there the entire time. And if you drop that block, it only drops debuffs. And it only increases it by 100 of your DP. So I feel that it, like, it, once you enact it, it should increase your DP by 100 is fine and acceptable. Maybe, like, average off your levels that you have in your 1 through 4. And then once you hit a certain amount, it goes up to 150 or 200, so it scales a little better into the late game. But once you enact it, it should not only negate debuffs, but it should also negate a portion of damage, like an auto-block function for like 4 seconds and have like an 8 second cooldown. So like you can pop it at the beginning of a fight, in the middle of a fight, and you don't have to feel like you're standing there stuck behind a shield and just... Ugh. Because, I mean, he has a skill called Formation Break, and he practically goes into a formation. So, I mean, I just don't think it makes too much sense. Next. 
Coming in at number five is Badal the Golden. I went back and forth on this quite a bit. Now, don't get me wrong. I like Badal. I like his kit a lot. I really do. But the thing that gets me is it's his four. While it's a great ability, it really is. I love the four. I love it. But it only buffs one of his abilities. I feel like if you want Badal to be better or more even, you adjust his uh, his damage numbers a little bit. They seem to be lacking just a, just a touch, but you adjust the four. He can only buff one ability. I feel like that whenever you activate it at later ranks or however many points you have into it, it should buff that many more abilities. So like one point, you get a buff one ability. Two, you get a buff your next two abilities. Three, your next three abilities. And you get like a five to seven second buff on yourself for auto attacks and attack power. That would make him seem a little more strong and make him scale a little better into the late game because as it is, you only get a pick. Like, oh, do I need a... Helix cannon this person with my four, or do I need to grab them? And it put it narrows him down and it pigeonholes him into like a specific style of playthrough that the care that the player is doing. Like if the player likes the two more than they like the one or the three, they're gonna always do a four-two combo. If they like the one more and they can consistently hit it, they're always gonna do four-one. But if you allow it to have that buff for like three abilities and like a five seven second attack power buff it allows them to check and it allows them to play more openly and it doesn't specifically put them to be like boom because most people they get into like a style of habit whenever they're playing these characters and they do those combos that they they know work and that most people fall for and he's no exception he falls perfectly in line with those combos and with everything else so I feel like that would be an acceptable thing to do to bring him up the line and impart with some of the other people. And up next, without further ado, we have the one, the only Yanhua. 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 There we go. I said it right that time, I think. Um. I feel like her four, I feel like I probably should have put her a little bit lower down on the list, but I honestly couldn't do that considering how fast she can move and her red moon ability. So what do I mean by that? Um, her fallen flower is very nice. It allows you to chase down opponents and because that little speed boost actually helps a lot. But I feel like where she does fall off is her one. Yes, it's her pretty much her only range skill. But it doesn't make sense with what she is. She's like a samurai type person, even with a counter and her clairvoyance. Like, I don't know, give her like a... A dash or something. I mean, the three is kind of like a dash backwards, but maybe make her one, like where she dashes forward, causing a cut that in that induces a slow. Or she can even stand there and charge it, like her two. But then it'd be two charging abilities. But I don't know. Find some way to give her something else on her one. She doesn't have a bow anywhere, and whenever you pop that, you're like, where did this bow come from? Um, although it is a cool ability and it does hit and it has a lot of range. It has a very small area to hit, and if you're much further away than even a third of the distance it can hit at, you're probably going to miss. If you hit it, good on you. Good luck engaging next. Because the person who you hit is going to know exactly where you came from, and then you're going to have to clairvoyance, bond cut, and then probably try and use your 4 or your Q to get out, or, or engage and kill them, depending on how well your headshot hit and how close you were to engage. But, like, the thing that brings her up so high on the list, like I said, is her four. Red Moon. 
That ability hits so hard, it's not even funny. Rank 1, no gear. 700. Rank 2, no gear. Over 950. Rank 3, I think whenever I looked at it was... 1200 or 1250, and that is just absurd. I would say... You know, lower the damage a little bit. Add a bleed onto it. I'm saying like lower it quite a bit. Lower it to be like, I don't know, like 1100 max with a bleed or like even uh, 1050 with a bleed that does 150 damage. At least allow someone the chance to use it to use a potion and have some sort of counterplay against her. That's just my thing. Um, Because right now it seems like you go in, she holds her two and then she immediately quick attacks you. Holds down left mouse, auto attacks for quite a bit, and then she does a three, and then next thing you know, you're probably going to, if she gets far enough away, she's going to one, and then she's going to four you to finish you off, because they're four her saving grace. It shouldn't act like an execute, it should act like an actual ability. Just me, I don't know. If you don't agree, let me know down below. After that, I have a toss-up. It is pretty much a tie between Ahon Kyrgios and Gerhard Schultz. If I have to absolutely pick one, it's going to be Ahon Kyrgios coming in at number three. What she does really well. Her, her Phantom Raven, very, very good. Dark Mark. I like the ability. I wish maybe it had like a... Like the only thing I would have against it is that it has a targeter. That Not a targeter, but like an auto-lock function per se. Like allow it at least to trace for a little bit. Like if somebody wants to like try and outrun it. Allow it to trace, but very slowly so that they can actually outplay it. Like right now, I, I, I love that it... In, uh, it decreases their defensive power and it allows you to engage uh i also like her too but that's where her whole ability well not her whole her whole kit it's her two and her four her two falls off for me because it's very very difficult once you use your one to try and hold down that two long enough to get the stun out of it so that you can engage further like, the way that her kit should ideally work is you 1, 3, 2, and a 4. But you can't do that if they're getting, if they're able to recover from the 3. Because you can't move while you're using the 2. If you could move a little bit, cool, that would work. Her 3, amazing skill, great knockup, great CC, not so good damage, it could be brought up a little bit. To be honest, if I'm not, if I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think that her three has enough damage, but it is really good CC. And maybe you could even bring it up damage, increase the damage, and then also have like a small multiplicative amount that it goes up per target hit. And then another, the other ability where she kind of falls off for me is her four, Son of Destruction. I find that unless you're really engaging with this ability, you're not going to be able to charge it up all the way. The only way that you can charge it up all the way is if they take off the... Whenever you move, it resets the tier of whatever you're on for the charge. So allowing you to move and start gaining charges up to three. So like... Because like if you just try and like set yourself up with the one, odds are you're going to... Pop it, and then you're going to throw it almost immediately for that damage. You want to let this charge. It does insane damage if you can charge it, but you can't move and throw it because you move slower, which I don't mind. I think that's a perk of it, and it allows for counterplay. But if you're still allowed to move, allow you to move while it charges, because then you actually can make use of your ability rather than just up, boom, and then throwing it and getting rid of it. Because, like, you're losing so much damage by doing that. But she does have one of the better kits, and I just feel like her 2 could needs a little bit of work, and her 4 allow you to move. 
pretty much it. Next, we have the Gerhard Schultz. I like almost everything on his kit. Unleashed Beast, pretty strong. My only complaint is for counterplay issues, I wish that they would make it more obvious that he had that buff on himself. If you're able to see that, it makes it so much better for you to know when to go in with your CC. Or if you're in teams, it makes it so much better to be like, hold off, just auto for a second, wait for that to go away, and then go in. So, I like his one. It's very good for chasing people. His two is really good. Like, the only counterplays really to his two is you waste your Q, or you be the Sork, and you use your Phantom Raven. Yeah. So, that's pretty much the only options for that, unless you just backflip away because you're Orwin. But, I don't know. I I feel like his two is really strong, and it's good. And then whenever uh, you're able to combo it up with his three, his three would be my, my disagreement, kind of, sort of, like... Like 65, 35. It needs to have a more accurate target indicator of where it's going to hit whenever you're jumping. And allow you to have a greater control of where you're going to land. If you want to land on the same target three times in a row, allow it. But allow that person to have some counterplay or something. I mean, I guess that's why it moves so far. So you can't land all three times. But then why have him jump three times at all? Just do it once. Uh, the other thing that I have a little bit of issue with is his 4. It, it's way too easily interruptible. If you're having to stand still in this game, which will bring me to my thing but in between the two tier lists and some of the combos. If you're having to stand still, you're gonna die. You're gonna have a bad time. Or you're gonna get hit and then you're gonna lose too much HP to recover effectively. His 4 should be partially like more difficult to interrupt. That's one of the reasons why Heroin's more difficult to play. Everything she has is easily interruptible. But for him, it's just that. But you have Unleashed Beast. If they can't get out of it, then they're stunned. So that that's really like the only option that you have to keep them in your four. Is you Unleashed Beast, and then you can four. But if you still get hit or whatever, you're going to probably get interrupted. So it's... I don't know. I feel like that should be less interruptible if you're asking me and number one you all knew that this was coming goyan while i am not the best goyan player he is probably without a doubt the highest damaging hero champion whatever you want to call it in Shadow Arena right this moment. His autos hit for like 250, 300. All of his abilities hit for like 400 or more. So. Goyen has great synergy with himself. He's able to set up almost everything with himself. And if you can auto attack cancel into all of his abilities, people will die. It takes some practice. If you want to see it, go on to the video where I explain Goyan combos and character breakdown. I show you how to how to auto attack cancel there. So his one hits really hard. I find that his one does kind of miss a little bit, depending on like the targeter and the, the hitbox of the characters. But overall, it's pretty solid. His two super good ability his three super good the only discontent i have is his four but it's spin to win you hold it down whenever they're low target and you knocked them on the ground already you just sh -ch 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 over and over and over and then tell all your stamina is gone and then you win if they get up you inherent skill with the gatekeeper and then you auto attack and they're probably dead anyways garen's damage numbers are insane they are out of this world should he probably be nerfed in the beta? Yeah. Is he going to? Probably not. But his damage numbers are ridiculous. <sighs> Anyways. That about does it for all of the... 
all of the, the tier list for solo play. Now, keep in mind that this is my opinion, and I do think that people have their own opinions, and certain characters will fit their playstyle better. But I tried to go with a non-biased opinion based on what the game has provided me playing all of the champions all day, almost every day this open beta has been up. Um, that's just my opinion. Uh, who's your favorite? Make sure you let me know down below. Who do you think is number one? If it's not Goyen, just let me know. And then I'd like to have a chat about it just to see what you think. Get some intel behind what you're thinking. All right. So moving forward, I have a gripe. It is how you level up. You should not, and I repeat, should not have to stop moving in the middle of a fight to level up an ability. Yet every time I push control in the middle of a fight to level up an ability, I stop and then I end up getting CC'd and I die. But you're like, but why do you try and level up during the fight? Because my ability will do that much more damage. Look at Yeon Hua, for instance. Her 4, 700. You level it up, 200 more. You level it up, it's like 300 more. Why wouldn't I want to do... 300 more damage with that skill to, if I can level it to max. So they need to fix that to where you can automatically, just by like pushing one of the F buttons, a lot of MOBAs do it and you claim that you're like a MOBA MMO hybrid type BR, that you use your F1, 2, 3, 4 to level up and it negates the issue of having to hold control and a number in the middle of a fight and freezing. All right, boom, gripe said. All right, so I'm going to go over what I think would be. It's hard to do a tier list on team because both team members are going to have different characters that they like, that they like to play with each other with, and it's going to be difficult, but I'm going to do it with what I think some of the worst ones will be and that you probably shouldn't run. And then I'll do some of the best ones that I think are better. And I'll be sure to indicate that with being, hey, boom, now onto the good ones. Cool. All right. So what I think some of the worst ones are. Orwin and Jordan. I feel like Jordan would have to be up front soaking up way too much damage and Orban wouldn't be able to get off as much as she would like. Next goes for Jordan and Badal the Golden. They're both melee. They both can kind of combo off of each other, just not well. Um, I feel like it's mainly because Badal has a grab. And his Thunderbreaker is a little difficult to hit at times. And then next, I would say... Badal. And Haru. I just don't think that their kits would synergize at all. Period. I, I would not even play with these, probably. Unless I had somebody that I really trusted on Badal. That... We could openly communicate. Hey, grappling. Hey, doing this. Hey, doing that. Set up, set up, set up. And then Haru can come in with her one and four combo and hopefully burn him down. But as it stands, I don't think that Haru has enough damage to be able to be comboed effectively with uh, Badal. That's just me. You don't like it? Hey. Next is going to be Haru with Jordan. While Jordan has high damage scaling abilities, Haru does not, and Jordan I don't think can set up well enough for Haru. Uh, the next would be Haru and Orwin. I think they're not good because Orwin's not going to provide any CC unless she sets up the trap ahead of time in, in, uh, in team play, and then you run to her, and then you... Uh, you bait in the team that's chasing. But I don't like people that 
that run really annoying especially if you're in the what is it the grace period just let me kill you you'll respawn you can group back up with your teammate let me get the kill let me get that boost of gratification early you don't lose any gear you don't lose anything it's fine you'll be all right but that's i just don't think that most people would synergize well with uh orwin the, the couple of exceptions would be heroin we're not there yet we'll get back all right so um the next bad one it would be jordine and probably ahon um i feel like he can lock them down enough and provide a little bit of setup but i feel like their kits contradict each other a little bit um and the only way that they're actually going to get like stun stunned is if Ahon is standing still and I don't think that Jordine has enough going on for him to be able to capitalize enough off of off of her and her combo and like her setup potential that she provides in the reverse like she can set up better for him than he can set up for her and she has the front line while he stands kind of at the back that's just my opinion I think that's how it is she threes and then he's able to come in with his three and four and do all the damage that, I don't think that's how that should work. You got a sword and a shield. You're a tank. <laughs> Plus you have higher HP. All right. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. I'm going to go into duos. Specifically duos. Trios are going to be way too hard and way too gruesome to try and break down in one video. Like what's good. Plus... I'm hoping that trios become their own thing in full release. I feel like it should have singles, duos, and trios. They should have their own thing. Trios should have maybe 60 people. Duos can keep what they have with the 40 or whatever. And then singles can keep their 40. That way it's somewhat even for teams and all that and people. And ratios stay the same. And they also should have matchmaking for teams for duos and trios. Not matchmaking. Group finder. All right, some of the top uh, top teams, I would say, is going to be um, Gerhard with Heroin, Ahon, and Yeon Hwa. I think that he's good with, uh, Gerhard's good with Yeon Hwa. Because his innate ability to set up for her. She's able to play back like you feel like... I feel like she has to play back. So if he goes in with his two and he sets up and like chucks them on the ground. He's able to come in with the headshot, stun them. And then he can start jumping. And then you know what? She red boons and it's over. They're dead. No more. No mas. Next we have... Gerhard and Ahon. I feel like she sets up really well. They both complement each other with their abilities. She threes. She sets up for his three. He twos. He sets up for her four. It's just stuff like that that's simple that makes them synergize really, really well. Now, Gerhard and Badal can work well with each other. They're, they're a little iffy. It comes down to the players, really. The thing that makes them good is they both have grabs. They have the only grabs in the game. So you can grab and then throw. Grab and then throw. And then you're able to just play off of each other that way. I think that that's, that's good chemistry. Uh, Gerhard and Heroin. I absolutely believe that Heroin is much, 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 much. I'll say it again. Much better as a support type character with their... Camasilv tree and both CCs that she can get. If she can manage to hit her seed of ice and then her dragon breath, and that allows Gerhard to grab, follow up. She has a lot of CC in her kit that's useful and she can actually play from range very, very effectively. Unlike Orwin, who doesn't have any CC from range, I, I don't like Heru with them because they, they don't combo well with each other, but Gerhard and Heroin, all day. And then finally, the top pick for people to group with Gerhard would be Goyen. 
We all know how broken Goyen is. Goyen's going to be fantastic with almost anyone you put him with because he has so much damage and he can set up for himself so effectively that others don't require hardly any setup. Period. But this is probably my number two pick for, for people overall. My number two pick for group. Goyen and Gerhard. Number two, it's not hard. Not even a matter of contestion at all. Uh, I just think that they work really well. Like, for instance, if Gerhard happens to to them and chuck them on the ground, Goyen can Gravedigger them. Then he can Corpse Cup, and then Gerhard can three right on top of them, and then it's just Spin to win or Iron Pulverizer from there for the win. They try and get up and run, Gerhard shouts at them, and they're stunned. And then Goyen does his combo. Just ridiculously OP. Alright, so before I continue with people that are good with Goyen, we're going to go into people who are good with Aeon. Aeon has a little bit of a different style. I feel like Aeon and Yeon Hua actually kind of group well together. Uh, not the best, but it allows for Aeon to set up for Yeon Hua. Uh, the same way that it allows Aeon to set up for Orwin and Haru. Those are all probably like B tier. Not really the best, but they stay... They set up with each other very well. They have great combos and synergy that once you get the damage going, it's going to be hard to stop it. But those three, that's Ahon Yeonhua, Ahon Orowen, and then, of course, Ahon Haru. Now, as far as the next ones, I'm going to say Ahon and Badal. I don't, I don't like them together. Forget I said that. I don't know what was going through my head right now. So, next is going to be Ahon and Gerhard. We already went over this. They're really good. Ahon and Heroin. Almost everyone on this list will be made infinitely better with a pocket Heroin. On the team. Especially if you're going to do trios. Just try and always run a Heroin. She sets up so well. Plus her Ancient Dragon's Breath hits like a truck. Uh, and then finally, Ahon and Goyen. Goyen can pretty much just go with anyone on this list and be next to top tier. Ahon and Goyen, probably my third overall. Uh, Badal can work well. But Gerhard, like we said, as long as you trust each other to grab and communicate effectively with your teammate. Um, next is Yeon Hua. I feel like Yeon Hua has a few, very few, uh, good setups. And just because of the damage alone, I feel like Haru and Yeon Hua, because of their fours, are very similar. I feel like they can actually play well off of each other with that. And that if you can get Haru to kind of frontline some of that damage, it allows Yeon Hua to come in behind with her headshot, and then she can play a little closer up, and they can ping pong back and forth between that. Uh, Yeon Hua and Goyen. Goyen knocks him down. Yeon Hua fours. They're dead. Especially if he's spinning on top of them. Alright. Are you ready? My number one overall tier list of duos. You got it. <laughs> you knew it was coming. It's Goyen and Heroin. Heroin has too much CC in her kit for her not to be... Uh, too much CC and too much healing in her kit to not work well with Goyen. Especially with Goyen being like a blood magic kind of... Uh, necrotic person and everything takes HP whenever he uses his abilities. She has heals. So she can help keep him alive. During those hard moments, she can throw down her four, keep him alive while he's doing his abilities. Plus, he doesn't seem to take that much damage, and he can actually heal himself up by staying close to her tree. So, I think that Heroin and Goyen, uh, if you can find a good Heroin, stick with them. Um, 
If you're doing trios, uh, number one would have to be Goyen, Heroin, and Gerhard. Goyen, Heroin, or Ahon. Uh, that's just how I see it going. I think that those, uh, either one of those in trios would be broken. Uh, I say pretty much anyone with Orwin, unless you're top tier Orwin, uh, gonna be bad. Just because I don't see her being that good right now. Um, but yeah. So, top in duos is Goyen Heroin. Top in trios is Goyen Heroin and Gerhard, or Goyen Heroin and Ahon. You can make an argument for Goyen Heroin and Yeon Hua because of her four. Aside from that, trios are going to be rough. So basically, Goyen, Heroin, Heroin, and these three right here, they'll be all solid. If you want like a secondary front line, you can try Jordine, but meh. We'll just stick with these three. All right, guys. That does it for the tier list. I hope that you found this enjoyable. If you disagree with something, let me know down in the bottom. Don't just automatically hit that dislike, please. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, ladies and gents. That's the tier list for duos. That's the tier list for summer trios. And that's the tier list for singles. Going on top for almost everything. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.